Volcano Bay is the stunning water park at the Universal Orlando Resort. This revolutionary water park opened in May of 2017 and is an absolute marvel. The park has a stunning 200 foot or 61 meter tall volcano smack dab in the middle of the park, a beautiful tropical atmosphere, and a top notch collection of water slides. But the park also has a controversial and mandatory virtual queuing system known as Tapu Tapu. This system is designed to improve overall guest satisfaction, but it may just lead to guest frustration. What did I think? Find out in this review of Volcano Bay. While Volcano Bay is currently the only water park at the Universal Orlando Resort, it was not the first. Before Universal Orlando even opened, there was a water park known as Wet n Wild. One of the nation's earliest water parks, Orlando's Wet n Wild opened in 1977. In 1998, Universal Orlando purchased the water park and continued to add slides over the next two decades. But by the mid-2010s, Wet n Wild's attendance was lagging behind that of the two Walt Disney World water parks and SeaWorld Orlando's recently opened Aquatica. Wet n Wild was a trailblazer. Until 1999, it was the highest attended water park in the United States, and the park featured a lot of revolutionary water slides but it just didn't have the theming or atmosphere of the other water parks to stand out in the dense Orlando market. In mid-2015, Universal dropped a bombshell. They would be opening a brand new $600 million water park called Volcano Bay. But a month after this announcement, Universal confirmed that Wet n Wild would be closing at the end of 2016 after months of speculation. Volcano Bay promised a water park experience unlike any other and that would certainly be the case with Tapu Tapu. This system was designed to keep guests out of long queue lines, which in theory would create a more relaxing and enjoyable visit. But when Volcano Bay first opened in May of 2017, early reviews were largely negative, and Tapu Tapu was to blame. But over time, Universal's refined this system, and my visit occurred in May 2021, roughly four years after the park originally opened. Now let's begin with the entry experience. Volcano Bay's iconic volcano is extremely visible driving down the highway, but you can't park anywhere near it. Unlike Universal Orlando's other two parks that are a short walk from each other, Volcano Bay is quite a bit further away. If you arrive by car, you park in the same garage you do for Universal Studios or Islands of Adventure, paying the same $20 to $25 rate, and then you take a shuttle bus to Volcano Bay. If you stay at one of the Universal on-site hotels, you get a designated shuttle bus that takes you directly to Volcano Bay. If you stay at Sapphire Falls, Aventura, or Cabana Bay, you can easily walk to Volcano Bay. This is what I did when I visited. Everyone visiting Volcano Bay is given a Tapu Tapu wristband when you enter the park. It fits securely on your wrist, and this is the key to your visit. This band reserves the water slides you intend to ride. One of the biggest surprises for me is that you have to physically walk up to each slide to reserve them. I expected the system to work like the Flash Pass watches at Six Flags parks, where you can reserve any ride as long as you're in the park, but that was not the case with Volcano Bay. I think the only way to get around this is to book a cabana where you can reserve slides from there. The band also allows you to interact with several features around the park. Most were a variety of water sprayers. Last but not least, you can also upload your credit card onto your band so you can make purchases without needing to carry around your wallet or phone. While I never linked my credit card at Volcano Bay, I can see how it would be extremely helpful. I've done something similar with the Magic Bands at Walt Disney World. The biggest issue with Volcano Bay are the virtual wait times. All of the major slides operate with virtual queues. In order to ride them, you must tap your band on the kiosk outside the attraction, which gets you a return time and the signature slides can have return times exceeding that of an hour, even on off-peak weekdays. And those times are even worse on weekends or hot summer days. You can only reserve one attraction at a time, so a super long return time can cripple your ability to ride anything. Once your reservation is ready, you often have to wait in a short 15 to 20 minute line before riding. So even if you may not have to wait a long time in a long physical queue, you'll still spend a lot of your day waiting for slides just around the park. The slide that gets the worst line by far is the Krakatau Aqua Coaster, the park's Pro Slide Master Blaster. I think this is the world's best water slide, so I completely understand why it gets so much demand. 
If you want to ride this water slide, you have three options. The first is to rope drop the attraction if you do not have early entry. Get to Volcano Bay for opening and head there first. Do not stop to buy a locker like most people do. Go straight to Krakatau and get your return time. Being ahead of the rush by just a few minutes can save you an hour. Speaking of lockers, there are several stations throughout the park. Almost everyone floods the ones up front, but I would recommend buying the ones further back from the main entrance where it's much less busy. But back to Krakatau. The second option is to use early entry. You get this by being a Universal Orlando annual pass holder or staying at one of the official Universal hotels. You get a half hour in the morning where every attraction in the park is so quiet that the virtual queues aren't necessary. I was able to ride Krakatau four to five times in that half hour so I could focus on the other attractions once the park officially opened. This allowed me to stay ahead of the crowds because everyone else was stuck in the virtual line for Krakatau while I was riding the other body and tube slides. The third option, and probably the most effective one, is to purchase an express pass. If you don't arrive at opening and you want to ride Krakatau, I think this is a must. The express pass allows you to bypass all virtual queues throughout the day, so you only have to wait in that short standby line for each attraction. While the signature slides will be on virtual queues all day, some of the smaller slides will be listed as ride nows. These are the attractions that will be your best friends while you wait virtually for the big ones. You also have the option to enjoy the lazy river, relax in a pool, grab a bite to eat, or soak up the atmosphere while you're waiting for a slide. And that atmosphere is arguably the biggest strength of Volcano Bay. The park is stunningly gorgeous. The reveal of the volcano is breathtaking. The park's main entrance and landscaping are positioned such that the volcano is hidden from sight until you enter the park. So it's a real wow moment when you see it right in front of you. It's one of the coolest reveals of any theme park. The volcano itself looks incredible from the front between the size and water flowing down it. It is a bit disappointing that it's open on the backside, but usually you'll be looking at the front of the volcano, so it's a rather minor nitpick. And the volcano looks cool from the inside too. There are a series of caves you can navigate with some neat effects, ranging from dancing fountains to the spirit of the volcano actually talking to you. The latter was a big hit amongst kids. The park as a whole feels like a tropical resort with the abundance of palm trees, detailed landscaping, rock work, and atmospheric music. These combine to give the park a super relaxing vibe. This is definitely the prettiest water park I have visited in the United States, and the only ones I've visited that can compete with Volcano Bay from an appearance standpoint are the ones in the UAE. But don't be lured into a false sense of security by the laid back atmosphere. Volcano Bay has some pulse pounding water slides. The signature attraction is the aforementioned Krakatau Aqua Coaster. I have a separate review that goes into more detail, but this hydromagnetic water coaster features several steep drops that give some shocking airtime for a water coaster. The final drop in particular is quite large and steep, so you really get popped out of your seat. Unlike most water coasters that just feature a small handful of steep drops, every single drop on this one is steep and produces airtime. I know the ones at Holiday World often win the award for the world's best water coaster, but Krakatau crushes those ones both in the intensity and visual departments. This is the world's best water slide in my opinion, and I'd take it over a large chunk of the rides at Universal's or amusement parks as well. It's that good. Moving on to the rest of the slides, one minor annoyance is that all the slide names really blend together, and it's tricky to remember which slide is which. Further, the names are tricky to pronounce, so I'm going to apologize if I butcher any of the names of the attractions in this review. The most extreme attractions in the park are the three drop pod slides atop the volcano. You have to hike up a lot of stairs, but it's worth it. These slides load you into a capsule, and the floor drops out from beneath you. Most of these slides have countdowns, but the ones at Volcano Bay just have atmospheric music, which builds the anticipation and makes it impossible for first timers to tell when they're going to be dropped. Cow Curry Body Plunge is a 125 foot or 38 meter tall speed slide. It opened as the tallest drop pod slide in the world and it features a near vertical 70 degree plunge. The view atop the slide is incredible and you feel every bit of that height, but the drop itself was a bit disappointing compared to the other speed slides I've ridden of this variety. This one goes straight down, but a big thing for me are the visuals. The tube was really foggy and dark, 
so you cannot appreciate any of the visuals on the way down. It is still an absolute rush though. Unfortunately, Kala and Tai Nui Serpentine slides were closed during my visit, but those who have ridden them say they're comparable to Ihu's Breakaway Falls at Aquatica, which I think are some of the most extreme water slides in the industry, so I'll have to go back to ride them. The two other extreme body slides are Oh Yeah and the Oh No Drop Slides. These are twisted slides with a shockingly high drop into the splash pool. I found the slides themselves really slow, but it's always cool being launched directly off a slide into a pool. So few slides do it, and it's quite the shock. This one is for strong swimmers only, for obvious reasons. These slides were ride nows for the duration of my visit, but I believe they use the virtual queues on busier days. The final body slide is Punga Racers. Now this slide originally opened as a mat racer, but the short runoff caused a lot of issues. This caused the slide to have a super low 150 pound weight maximum, so Universal converted this slide into a more accommodating body slide recently, and it's enjoyable for all now. Two of the more popular raft slides are Honu and Ika Moana, which are on the same tower. Honu has a few steep drops for a water slide, and two giant waves you slide up. The first drop and wave offered some minor weightlessness, but you're slowed down a bit too much before the second one to get similar sensations. Meanwhile, Ika Moana is a long family raft slide that winds you about. Reinforced Village has a few additional tube and raft slides that are almost always listed as ride nows. Taniwa Tubes is a rather tall tower combining four different tube slides consisting of tight turns and quick small drops. These aren't super intense, but it's hard to argue with something that isn't on the virtual queue at this park. Maku and Puhi are family raft slides with mini funnels and saucer turns, which give them more variety over the aforementioned Ika Moana. One final note for all the water slides is that there are shoe and shirt racks at the entrance to each slide. I love this feature because it allows you to wear sandals traversing the park to prevent baking your feet on the hot pavement. Alternatively, it allows you to take off your water shirt before going on one of the body slides. For kids, they will want to spend a lot of their time at Tot Tiki Reef and Runamuka Reef, which has gentler slides and interactive water features galore. If water slides are not your thing, or you want to reprieve from them, you have several options. You have the obligatory wave pool in front of the picturesque volcano, or you have some calmer pools nearby as well. And you also have two river rides. Kopiko Y Winding River is your traditional lazy river where you leisurely float down the river and also go through the volcano. Alternatively, Teawa the Fearless River is a more intense ride. All guests don a life jacket and enter a turbulent water river without a tube and you're quickly propelled through the ride. I had never done one of these action rivers before and it was a pretty cool feeling being helplessly pulled through the water. Now do I recommend Volcano Bay? It depends. I would prioritize the two Universal theme parks over Volcano Bay and I would also prioritize the other major parks in the Orlando area as well. However, if you have a long vacation at Universal, or are an annual pass holder, I do think Volcano Bay is well worth experiencing, especially because you'll have early entry to beat the crowds. If you want to experience a water park while in the Orlando area, I think Volcano Bay is easily the best in terms of atmosphere and water slides. The only thing you have to watch out for are the Tapu Tapu virtual queue lines backing up the popular slides. This can make or break your visit. For this reason, it's hard for me to recommend the park without express or early entry. But if you have a plan to avoid these queues, I think this is a top tier water park with a really unique atmosphere and nice slide lineup. So those are my thoughts on Volcano Bay, the really cool water park at the Universal Orlando Resort. What are your thoughts on Volcano Bay, whether it be the slide lineup or the Tapu Tapu system? I would love to hear what you think down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.